All right, so we're going to talk about 10 reasons to standardize web development on Pantheon. I am Drew Gordon. I am Matt Cheney. Uh, and uh, we'll move through these things. We might have, uh, likewise, be able to return everyone to their you know, regularly scheduled lives here <coughs> in less time. But uh, so Pantheon is a, a, an excellent platform. We're also in the, the, um, in the hall downstairs. You come by and see a demo and such. Um, we have built a platform that does an, an incredible job of uh, delivering, delivering uh, websites in a highly performant way. Uh, but there's a lot of things that we also do that are far beyond hosting. So we like to think of ourselves as a website management platform. So I'm going to talk through these 10 sort of reasons, uh, issues that we, uh, that we solve that are pretty common to web development. So, uh, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll see. So, uh, all right, so project setup. Is this you? Is it you? Yeah, well, let's just, like, quick show of hands. Who's actually used Pantheon or is familiar with Pantheon? All right. Let me just do a little orientation around this because I think we got a little time, and I think this could be really sort of cool for everyone in the room. So Pantheon is a company that we've been doing for about five years, basically building, in our view, the best web management platform for Drupal. So we're really focused on providing a developer experience and a set of tools that you all as developers, project managers, and site owners can really take advantage of. It leverages a lot of the containers spoken about in the last presentation. We're really big fans of container architecture. We think that's also the future of how the web will work. And we've been playing around to really build um, a really great platform that uses those containers um, to do really awesome Drupal stuff. Um, such as host docker.com on our platform, to, which, which I think is super cool. Um, and the basic idea here is that also a lot of the tools, a lot of stuff we'll show you is free for developers. That if you're a developer doing, you know, making a site, you can use our platform, you can spin up our stuff and, and really play with it all you want to see how good it is and see if it works for you. That the only point which you'd have to like pay us is if you actually went live with your site, which in our view is like adding a custom domain and putting it on, on the public internet. But what you get sort of as a developer is a sort of opportunity to really have a lot of tooling that you would want. So you can sign up for an account on our website, Pantheon.io, under Create Free Account, and then you'll log into something that looks a little bit like this, where you'll have sort of your own account where you can do things like, you know, have your password or upload your SSH keys and this kind of stuff. You can have a list of all the different sites that you're working on, Here's a bunch of stuff I have, some of which are cool, like, you know, my bicycle company's website is on there. A bunch of these are test sites. You can basically have as many of these development sites as you want to play around with, with actually doing, doing various things. It's also really easy to create sort of new sites that we offer this really cool opportunity to say, you know, this is a wonderful website. And by just naming it, affiliating it with our particular, particular agency account if you want, and then it'll create a, a web address, dev dash, this is a wonderful website, .pantheon.io. And sort of when we kick this off, our sort of back end is starting a process of actually spinning up a number of different containers to actually put your website on the internet. So we'll go grab Drupal 7 right here, and then we're gonna go through a process that'll take about a minute and a minute and a half. But what's happening here is we're actually provisioning a bunch of different containers to build your website. So we're like, setting up some Nginx containers to actually run your web server. We're setting up some PHP containers to actually do the processing of your, of your Drupal code. We're setting up some containers of a file system we made back in Cassandra to host your files um, on, your, on your website. We're setting up some containers to run the MariaDB database that'll run your Drupal site. We're setting up uh, some containers to do Apache Solar for search, some containers to do Redis for data structure caching. And this all ties into a pretty custom architecture that we've been working on to route all of your traffic through Varnish and really create a great sort of, you know, performant environment for Drupal. Um, so if, there's a longer demo around all this if you want to come by our booth. But just the idea here is that we want to make, use containers to make really, make it easy to set up Drupal sites and get them on the internet. And then once that happens, we want to allow people to have a lot of other opportunities and flexibilities to do stuff with those websites as developers, like move from dev to test to live, like run automatic tests on the, on the site. 
like easily create backups, easily invite your team members to collaborate. You can see here, and use it all with a really, we hope, developer-friendly kind of system. You want to go in and connect to start editing files uh, on the site right away. Here's some connection information just for this particular dev instance. If you want to do a Git checkout, we can get you the Git information right here. You can pull that down. Do you want to connect to the database right here? You want to grab your log files, your files, we give you information right there. And these are all things that as sort of a developer, you're very interested in wanting to have access to. We make it really easy. Also, if we want to invite our team members to go ahead and, um, and be involved, I can invite my colleague, Dwayne, who's downstairs. And with a simple like email address, it actually will go take his account also on Pantheon, add it to our team. Uh, and he'll now have access to, to push code and, and check it out and work on the site. And the idea here, sort of, and getting into our sort of thesis around agency work, is that if you're an individual developer working on a single site, like this is, very, this is still valuable to you. You get all these container performance advantages. You get all this developer tooling. But what really becomes powerful is if you're working with other people on your project and you're doing more than one website, you're going to run into a series of problems that Drew and I will talk about. That actually, you know, sometimes it can be a real pain to have 10 different customers that all are running on different kinds of platforms where you're like sharing credentials over email and, you know, having new people have to like learn a new system to, to start each project. That one of the things that's really awesome on Pantheon is that beyond just the individual site, the environment, we offer the ability to actually have sort of organizations or groups of sites. So that if you're, for example, you know, interested in, you know, say you've got 20 or so sites on the platform, we'll actually show you a sort of dashboard of all of those things so that you can actually see, you know, hey, here's all of the people that are sort of developers in my organization. These are actually just all me, but um, you, can, you can add other people to your organization, again, by email address, um, and that having the option to actually have different uh, different roles and permissions. So you can have some people that are just developers, some people that are straight admins, some people that, um, that are just unprivileged and just to view. You also get this really awesome sort of dashboard where you actually can see all of your different stuff. You can say, oh, these are the sites that, you know, I'm working on for, you know, on a friendly basis. Here's my sites that are really, you know, cool Drupal projects. Uh, here's some sites that are, you know, in, in development. Here's some sites that are live and this kind of thing. And this can be really helpful because if you're sort of involved in an agency, especially if you're managing a lot of, of, of projects on a support basis, that you're sort of working with them over the long run, it's really easy to say, okay, you know, what sites need, need updates and, um, you know, we can go in and click on a specific site from our dashboard. It'll then just sort of go do a quick check to see, hey, is there a new version of this thing and there's some, some new code to do. We can just go ahead and apply that if we want. And that's pretty, sort of a nice little process just for managing, um, managing our sites. You can also sort of do really cool tagging system where you're actually providing organizational information to the site. And you can start to sort of build up this kind of tool set. You, know, you also have the cool option if I went actually and added someone to my, my organization and I want them to work on you know, this, this Palestinian site, this law firm site, and this web form uh, test, I can just go ahead and add a single team member, you know, to all of those sites. And then they'll now have access to those sites. And I just show all this because this is the kind of thing that sort of, when we're sort of the sort of purpose of talk, talking about standardization, that I just want sort of all of you who like do web development to think of how many hours and how much sort of stress you're doing setting up servers, building deployment scripts, maintaining those scripts, sharing passwords with your clients, figuring out you know, how to set up a test environment, um, you have to figure out how like, to like reference, well, you have all the support tickets are all aggregated together, finding those support tickets, and being just really on top of all of your sites. And that these are hours, in our view, that are better spent on more you know, advanced and interesting projects. That if you're a sysadmin, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to just like get a ticket to like create yet another Drupal 7 site, and then you go out and spend two hours to do that. You should, you should have a script that does that once that, we, that someone else writes and maintains, and then you write a bunch of cool custom tests 
or other kinds of, uh, of DevOps stuff on top of the platform. That we really are trying to encourage people to sort of move up the stack and go beyond just sort of the bare bones. Because problems like dev to test to live and performance and Drupal, these are problems that are better solved with very smart robots, not with people's time. And so part of what we sort of do at Pantheon is create a product that has an agency dashboard, that has individual sites that you can manage and have it all in a standardized way. And so sort of in terms of our presentation, what we want to do is just sort of talk through sort of 10 problems that we see people who, not, not even necessarily using, that they solve using Pantheon, but problems that they have if you're like using a lot of different environments, if you're not standardized on it. Um, things we think we solve, of course, at Pantheon, but these are sort of 10 problems that, that we see uh, you have. So sort of what we're up to. I don't think it'll take super long, but I think it's sort of fun. So we'll alternate. I'll go first, then Drew will go, and we can go back Question. and forth. Yeah. It's focused on Drupal websites. Yeah. Um, you can have the websites be behind some sort of authentication if you want. You can have them be logged in through Drupal or, or basic auth. But it's, it's designed for Drupal development, however you end up making your Drupal website. So. Do you have a like, follow-on from there? Is there like a for instance something you're thinking of? I was thinking about internet actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. sites that actually requires a login. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but it's not perfect for single yeah. sign-on. Yeah. I was just thinking, isn't that yep. the previous presentation was about the private network. So, well, you probably be telling us uh, which infrastructure is on. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I would just say that... Um, what, we, what we've done is sort of built, we do have our own sort of private connections between all of our different servers. We run about 200 different servers that all run different containers on them for, for the various operations. And when I spun up that site from before I created that new site, it took a little sliver of PHP off, off a few servers, a little sliver of database off one, little sliver of files, and put them all together. And all of those connections are private with, inside our network. They're all authenticated using, using, using certificates. And um, that piece, we all believe, is very secure. In terms of then sort of building an internet site, a lot of folks will use us to build internet sites, especially ones that are pretty large. You end up needing a lot of different resources. So one of the cool things that we can do is that we can start out with maybe only having two or three containers running PHP for your site, but we can expand that out to 20 containers if that would be helpful for you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very sort of general purpose for Drupal, though. If you can do a cool, secure internet in Drupal, we'll do that. If you want to build a public-facing brochure marketing site for your company, we'll do that, too. You can sort of run any kind of Drupal 6, 7, or 8 code that you want. All right. So 10 common problems, things that you'll run into as sort of developers if you're working in a, a team and you're using different solutions. So number one is that you do end up wasting a lot of time doing DevOps setup over and over again. That say you have a customer, they're like, hey, cool, we want to work with you. They sign a contract, now you have to start the project. Well, that process now is going to involve some setup. You're going to have to go out and get the latest version of Drupal. You're going to have to set up a web, a web server or uh, at least a vhost file on an existing server to have your dev instance. You're then going to need to figure out how to get a version control set up put in so it's in version control. You're going to need to have a search solution, which could be a Apache Solar set up. You're going to have to then create a test environment to actually review those changes before you have go into a live environment, which you also need to create. That live environment will need things like Varnish and Redis and APC and tuning of all of the different components to work. You're going to need to set up scripts so that you can actually go from dev to test to live. You'll need a way to back up the database and the files. You'll need a way to move the databases from live back to dev for, for work. If you're using you know, feature branches, you'll need a way to actually have each individual developer have their own, own kind of dev information. You're going to need access control for the people that are supposed to be on the project or the people that aren't. You're going to need monitoring solutions like New Relic to keep that together. And you're going to want to have that for every single project. But this is something that takes time. And it either takes a, a person's time to build scripts to do this in the first place and then maintain those scripts over the long run or it takes someone's time at the beginning of the project to actually do project setup. And our view is that this is wasted time. It's either time you can't bill for, 
or it's time that maybe you do bill for, but you'd rather be spending that time doing more interesting stuff on the platform. So our solution here is that developer dashboard I just showed that you can actually have our system and our robots and our scripts spin up your next Drupal site. We've done it 100,000 times. We can do it one more for you. And that you can actually use our stuff to get up and running for free so that you can get going with your actual development and actual value as your service instead of working on sort of rebuilding the wheel for every project. <clears throat> All right. And another thing that we do that, um, again, this is like – uh, our mindset, and actually, we came from an agency background. So Matt uh, ran Chapter 3 for many years, and uh, I used to run a company called Gordon Studios. And so we understand these problems quite deeply. And so, again, what, we're, what our focus is uh, as a platform is to try and deliver as much possible value as we can to agencies. And, uh, and so, again, we, we, we bring that mindset to everything. And, uh, you know, what we, we're showing 10 reasons today, but uh, we keep getting better as well. Um, so another thing that often happens is you get developers on top of each other's work, right? So you're all working on uh, some different kind of aspect of the client's website, and someone's doing a hot fix over here, and someone's doing like a, a new large feature development and such. Um, the uh, the ability to give everyone a like a, their own separate environment, which is in fact a duplicate of the live environment that is completely there, it's very safe, totally uh, resource isolated. Uh, yet a mirror of the live environment is an incredibly powerful thing. We call that multi-dev, and it's very similar to Git branching. And in fact, there's like kind of like the we we can talk about that if anybody has questions. But um, the ability to do that kind of Git branching with the mirror of the live site is an, a really powerful uh, feature. Um, yeah. Um, a third problem that we see is that. If you have multiple sites that need to use the same kind of common code base, this can be difficult to do and a little bit insecure. That you may be working with a university who wants 40 websites that will all be sort of the same. They'll have the same theme, same modules, same thing they'll find on. But like managing those, the, all those things at once gets really tricky. You don't necessarily want to create 20, 20 or 40 sites and then have to go individually to each one to do updates. But you also may not want to use Drupal's multi-site to do this as well. Drupal's multi-site has a lot of security problems in that if you've got 40 sites on the single platform, if one gets hacked, all the others get hacked. You also have performance problems where if you have 40 sites on a multi-site and one has a really great traffic day, it'll be the, real, the worst day for all the other sites because they'll suffer under heavy load. And then if you do do an update to one of the sites, it could break the other 39, and this gets really dangerous. So our solution is that we offer you, when you actually create the site, I showed that before we picked Drupal 7 as our, as our upstream. We actually allow you to create custom starting points for your site. So you can have a version of Drupal 7 for your agency, which is maybe the 10 modules that you always use on every Drupal site. Or you could create like a university version of Drupal 7 that has that theme and thing will sign on and such. And that we're going to create individual containers for each of the different sites They'll be secure, for, they'll be independent of one another for security, and they'll have their own resources for performance. But they'll all be connected together using Git. So if you do have to make an update to all the sites, you make it once to a master repository, and then push it out to all the sites. And that this is, we call this custom upstreams, and we think this will save a lot of time, because there's some really cool projects you can do if you have to do 30 or 40 sites, but you want to do it in a secure way, and we feel using Git to make the code common and containers to make the sites distinct is the right way to do it. Yeah, so one of the things that Pantheon offers is we sort of offer, offer two, different, um, two different kinds of operations to do development. One option is that you can actually do a Git checkout and put that into a local solution that you might be running, a vagrant image, or um, uh, a MAMP stack, or, or some other solution. Um, we make it really easy on top of that to actually get, if you want to get the database, you can just do a quick export of the database and pull that down. We also uh, offer an ability to do something called SFTP mode, which is that you can use like a local SFTP client, like Transmit or FileZilla or something, to connect to our server and then mount the actual code directory 
for the dev site on your local computer as like a, a share. And then you can edit that directory. Um, those changes will then become synced to the server, and then you can actually do a sort of live git commit um, on, the, on the site, which is pretty nice. Um, and then those, those are two pretty interesting options. Um, there's, if you're very interested in containers, sort of as per this session, there is a cool tool that's currently still in development called Calibox that actually will create individual containers um, on your local machine. That'll be for Linux, Windows, and Mac that actually will let you do local development. And they have an integration with Pantheon option. So you just type your like username and password in Pantheon, pick a list from your sites, and then you can start with local development. Yeah, Calibox in particular, if, you, if, you are, if you're wondering about the next generation setup, like if you want something a little bit more modern than Maps, so think containers and such, something that was invented you know, not 10 years ago uh, because the, 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 the stack has evolved, uh, Calibox is an excellent option. So I highly encourage everyone to check that out. Uh, <clears throat> another common problem when working with uh, client websites is the, the production database is, is tricky to sync against. So sometimes you'll have just massive databases or, uh, or restricted ability to actually get to the database. Um, and, and syncing against that so you can actually know that your development, whatever it is that you're working on, uh, will actually do what you think it will do uh, can be a, an unexpected challenge at some points in time or, or an opportunity to learn, as I used to call it. Um, and so... The, uh, the workflow that we provide really does solve this. When you build things, so we have a dev, test, every single site comes with a dev, test, and live environment. So we were all looking at the dev environment, and we saw some updates that Matt showed there uh, on one of the sites and such. But once you get your dev work done, uh, pushing that up to test and bringing back the production workflow or the production database to test is, is a one-click operation. And it's, you know, the checkbox is there, checked by default. Just click it. And all of a sudden, all of that uh, content and configuration comes down from live, and the, your latest code goes up. And so you, you see it working in tests. That is exactly how it will work in live. Um, it's just the way it should work, and that's the way we do it. Uh, another problem that we see, and this happens probably more than you'd think, is that people will build websites in development, and they'll work fine if it's just them and a few people looking at it. But when those websites actually go to the public internet and get a little bit of attention, the problem is that the websites are slow, that they, they get a media event and they, they go down. That this happens a great deal with websites. It's unfortunate it does. Um, but it can be a real problem uh, for your agency. If you've built a site for someone and it's really cool and then a lot of people want to go to it, uh, it can get too much traffic and it can go down. Our solution to that is that we've sort of, as Drew mentioned, prior to, to doing Pantheon, we both worked at agencies building websites for customers. And we spent a lot of time in those roles making sure that customer websites were extremely well-tuned for high performance. That we know a lot about how Varnish works to do reverse proxy caching. We know a lot about how Redis works to do data structure caching. We understand opcode caching and all the tuning you need for MySQL and, and for PHP. And we know that a container architecture is going to be the most efficient way to spin up and down resources and route different traffic to different kinds of, 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 of PHP workers. And we built Pantheon as a solution to be the fastest, have the fastest runtime for Drupal websites in the industry. And, you know, there's other people that are also fast, but I think we have one of the fastest platforms, if not the fastest. And it's because every website that's set up goes through the same performance tuning process that we would have previously done a big consulting contract with someone to build. But because we do it automatically, it becomes something that just happens every time. So if you have issues with your sites having some performance problems and you have to pull off one of your senior people to try to fix it and that you're sort of just ending up, you know, reinventing your own sort of performance solutions, going to a standard approach with a platform that understands performance can be really effective because we've done this 100,000 times. We know how to make the websites fast and we can give you a really good best practice environment more or less out of the box. Yeah, on that, actually, we, um, so it's, it's hard to measure, so actually, just going to mention one more thing on this. So the, it's, you know, people are always going out and saying, who's the fastest host? Like, one of those studies comes out every, you know, every other day, um, and, uh, or studies probably is a fancy word for them, uh, but, you know, we link to a couple from our, our, our uh, site, but um, we're consistently either the top or the top 
you know, three or something like that. And that, again, comes down to, like, methodologies and all those other things being used. Uh, but we also serve uh, something of, like, one in every uh, – our back of envelope, one in every thousand page views on the web is coming off of Pantheon at this point in time. And, uh, and that's the same architecture that handles all of our sites. There's, so uh, you cannot have a big day on Pantheon that would somehow – make us sweat at all. So the best day you could possibly ever have for one of your websites uh, is going to be just, hey, just some more traffic. Um, so uh, another issue, super common. So you have uh, a new person joining the project. It's either a contractor or maybe it's or the opposite sort of side of that. This is the CTO or something. This needs to get involved. And in order to actually get there and be able to do a little bit of work, spend hours and hours and hours you know, getting the, the keys for, for this or you know, making sure that they're cleared for this kind of access from this person over here and this kind of access over here. And the, the many hours of work that go into like, just even being able to join a project so you can either review code or do some work uh, can be non-trivial. Um, and, and sometimes even uh, be more time than the actual time that you would spend doing the work. Um, and so... Uh, for Pantheon, we just saw that we, you know, Matt showed it a little bit earlier. Someone needs to join the project, type in their email address, boom, done. Another problem, or just sort of more like time suck that we see, is that actually when security updates come out for Drupal Core, these are things you obviously want to apply to your site. And that kind of process can, in fact, be a little bit tricky to do, that you know, you're going to need somebody who understands how to use Git and in some cases use Drush to actually do the update. That if you have core patches that you've applied, you're going to have to figure out how to reapply them after the update. And that if you have on a support contract, like you have a lot of these things to do. So for every, on a Wednesday, if a Drupal security release comes out, you end up having to take up valuable developer time to just apply the same patch over, or same update over and over and over again. And this, you know, isn't crazy hard, but it can take a bunch of time that you'd probably rather be spending doing other stuff. And worst case, you can make a mistake and sort of mess up the update, and then the site itself will go down, which is obviously no good. So our solution to this is sort of twofold. One is that we, for every Drupal core update, we offer a one-click button on our dashboard to actually do the update. I showed that a little bit ago. It's a yellow, yellow box. If you actually have a, a site that needs an update, you'll get an email from us saying, hey, you need an update. You'll jump into your, your site. There'll be a button that you push to update it. And then right in the development environment, it'll apply that update. And what's awesome is that because it uses Git to apply the update. So if you've made other core patches to the system, it's going to do a Git merge operation to apply the new update. Usually it's no problem. We just merge it in automatically and you go on your way. If it does have a merge conflict, it'll tell you and you can resolve that. But it's something that makes core updating easy and not something that needs like a really technical resource that anyone can basically do the update by pushing the button. And then you move it from the development site to the testing infrastructure and actually review it before ultimately going live. And our hope here is that this just saves people a lot of time in terms of doing the updates, especially if they have a lot to do and need to get them done quickly for security reasons. <clears throat> yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yep. So the question was, would that work with multi-dev as well? So you can apply that uh, patch to, um, to, to multi-dev environments specifically. Yep. Um, all right, so sometimes you build something really complex, and uh, there's an issue with it, right? Uh, we all, I mean, I know that I always wrote perfect code. Matt, likewise, just absolutely even yep. perfect-er. Uh, but, you know, someone else on the team might have written something that's a little bit com uh, not quite as clear as it could be. And you have to try and understand where the bottleneck is. Um, and that can be a real pain. Um, and if you haven't built this already into your all, all of your workflows, uh, going back and retroactively saying, all right, um, how am I going to possibly diagnose what's going on is a really big challenge. Um, and uh, our solution to that actually is just use New Relic. It's, a, it's an excellent tool. Um, and we just 
build that into the platform. So anytime you have a site on Pantheon, you're also having new relic there available to scrutinize what's going on. And you can just dig right in. Why is this particular query slower? We're like getting weird page loads here. Dig right in. See, there it is. All right, ah, there's something going on with image resizing. Better go check out that function. Boom, figure it out. Um, without tools like New Relic around, that, you know, something that, that takes minutes with a tool like that uh, could be hours or even days of just sort of like wandering around hoping you find the right needle in the haystack. Just a question. Do you pay separately? No. You do not. Yeah, the, so we have an agreement with New Relic so that all the sites on Pantheon will be able to use the basic tier of New Relic, which actually offers a, a lot of options for monitoring and for, um, for, for diagnosis. You can go, if you, there are some more advanced features like custom, custom reporting and some, some event-driven kind of stuff that you can upgrade and pay more. But all sites can use New Relic as, with the standard uh, package. Um, another problem that we found, we did a survey of, uh, of sort of web agencies and web developers and asked them, um, sort of think of your last, you know, four or five projects, how many of them launched on time? And we found that about 60% of the projects did not, in fact, launch on time. They were, they were delayed. In some cases, days, in some cases, weeks, and in a few cases, you know, months or, you know, year or so, um, my, you know, my sequels, uh, you know, at 19 years for uh, for five seven. So things can go late, and we're not going to solve all these problems, of course. But one of the things that we make we help to make your site launch on time is that we we have this workflow where you can go from dev to test to live with just a click of a button, and that as as Drew mentioned, the live environment is also the same in terms of the containers and the and the configuration as the test environment is the same as the dev environment. So that the kinds of problems that we saw that like block launches, like, oh, it doesn't work on live, but it worked on my local machine, or in my dev environment, you don't have those kind of problems because the live environment is running the same as the dev environment. Likewise, if you have a sort of last minute change that you have to put up, it's not like you have to go out and like redo your whole like deployment, you know, big launch procedure to do it, you can just push the change into dev, then to test and to live. And so our hope is that more sites can launch on time when they use this kind of best practice uh, kind of workflow tool that you can go dev to test to live. And that within each of these environments, you can see here. So I, just to sort of a demo, um, I had gone into the site when we started and it had a yellow box to upgrade to the latest version. This is running a Drupal distribution called Panoply, uh, which is fabulous, by the way. Um, and that new version, 1.27, it has a git commit. This is actually all of the, the code that was there. Um, but I want to test it before it goes live. So I actually have an option to deploy that commit. It'll bring the commit from dev to test. It also will go and take the database and the files from the live environment and move them into the test environment. Then it will run update.php and clear the Drupal caches. And what's really great is that like this isn't going to take more than like about 45 seconds, but it's going to give us this really awesome test environment that is in fact basically exactly what it's going to look like when it goes live because it's running the exact same con uh, configuration in all the containers. It has the up-to-date, most latest code that you want, and it has the exact copy of the database and the files from the live environment. And that this is something that you can script and you can do. You can do a MySQL dump and from live and, and move it to your test. You can, you know, rsync the files. You can, you know, do a git tag and then deploy it to a new environment that you set up. Like this is all stuff you can do, but it's stuff that can be a little bit, a little bit daunting. This is just one button to push. And then if you actually want to go live, it's no more than just clicking deploy. And if you've reviewed it in test, you have a pretty good chance that it'll work in live. So our hope is that'll make more sites launch on time. Yeah. Like you have the um, multi-dev, do you have multi-test? Uh, so, so we have a feature, as, as, as Drew mentioned, you just asked about, called multi-dev, which basically means any Git branch that you have, we can instantiate an environment based on that. So we can set up a you know, web server and a URL and stuff. Um, you can have as many of those as you want. We only have one formal test environment, 
But we see a lot of folks using multi-dev to spin up other environments that then this become test environments that you can use. So we have people like, that like have acceptance testing and, and QA and stuff that use it that way. Yeah, and we, and we again, provide the tools. So uh, our hope is, and we, we see this from our agency partners, uh, our hope is that each individual agency can use these uh, to you know, personalize it to their own workflows, their own paces, and their own um, procedures for, for doing things like QA testing and such. Um, uh, <clears throat> so another... Um, so an another thing that happens often in web development is you, uh, you, you know, like we've got this project over here, this project over here, this one's using these set of servers, these things over here, and um, the 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 time to orient yourself to all of the things in that each of those individual environments is non-trivial. Um, you have too many things to learn on each individual project, and again, we're all smart people; we can learn them, um, but project bugs are fixed, right? You, whatever amount of time you spend in that sort of overhead stage comes away from your overhaul uh, uh, budget for the project. So whether it's five hours or 15 hours or two hours, uh, I know people who work on projects that are complex enough that, that uh, the actual setup time to even just get you know, able to do the first actual things, they, they ballpark two weeks. Uh, that's an astoundingly terrible statistic. Um, you should not have to spend that much time in order to start being productive. And so again, um, if you standardize on Pantheon and have all of these great tools all the time, it's super simple. Just have it be taken care of. This is all robot business. Like, let the robots take care of it. Um, use the best tools all the time, and uh, we'd love to have you do that on Pantheon. Um, and we have a booth downstairs uh, if you want to see a larger demo of what we showed or have questions about how we set up the container architecture or, uh, or other stuff, come visit us. But we thank you uh, for our, your attention uh, on our 10 common problems and how standardization can help solve them. Thank you, everyone. And we're happy to answer questions now as well, if anyone has. Oh. Uh, do you handle config module updates? A contrib module updates is the question. Do we handle those? No, we do not handle that automatically for you. So if there's a new version of views or something like that, uh, that's not the case. If you have... Um, one possible way of handling that is to use what we call the custom upstreams, which Matt talked about. Um, so if you have a common base package that you start with, every project, like we have used this, 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 these 38 modules, um, if you make that update to your base uh, distribution, um, that can flow through all of the, the sites uh, automatically. Thanks. Um we do work for a, a federal government in the U.S., mm -hmm. so I was wondering, I, I think you're not FedRAMP certified, the platform, but just for in terms of security and compliance for government, and maybe there, that's a question for the European context as well. I don't know what that is here, uh, but in the States, um, FedRAMP, um, where, where's Pantheon? Yeah, on? so the question is, hey, what you know, we do government work. What kind of security stuff do you have? So I'd say, like, Big picture, like, we take security very seriously on pantheon.io slash security. We'll show you, like, a lot of the techniques that we use to, you know, do intrusion detection and auditing and, you know, stuff. Or we do a lot of with PCI, for example. We have a lot of, the, of those features of certification. We don't have FedRAMP specifically. Um, I think Black Mesh is the only one um, in at least the U.S. that does that work. But we have a number of government sites that will, um, will host us that they don't have those requirements. It just sort of depends um, yeah, on what you have. Um, the yeah, it's, and I would also say just a lot of those certifications are also changing a lot. That like the container architecture is very new, and like we filled out some secure. We've done some security sort of reviews of people where they'll ask like you know a lot of questions are like where you know where you know where in your office are the servers? Who has keys to them? And this kind of thing, which is like not what we do, obviously. Um, and so I think a lot of that kind of stuff's being updated, but. Uh, we like we like government stuff. Government's a huge a huge group that does Drupal stuff. There's like 27 or 28 percent of all government sites are Drupal. So it's cool you're working on some. Yeah. Um, maybe one day we'll be FedRAMP. That could be sort of cool. Yeah, yeah certification is very different than secure. I, yeah, I'm sure right. Pantheon's very secure. Yeah. Um, sort of a follow up question for the way I don't know if this mic is working, but uh, just about the the multi dev. Yeah. And the databases. Um, is there a way to do like database sanitization so that your developers don't have an actual copy of the live site in case for a, a security barrier uh, that maybe your developers 
Odd, yeah. Odd not to have the the actual live database. Yeah. So the question is, hey, you know, when we're using, when we're, we have developers that need to have more restrictive access and yeah. sanitize stuff. How do we deal with that? So first thing is we have a technology called like change management on the platform that allows you to add people to your projects that are just developers, which means they can't access the test database or the live database or the code base for that. That's sort of piece one. That, that's pretty helpful. And then the second thing we have, which we didn't show off here, but we could show off in the booth, is that we actually have a command line interface for all of the different um, functions on the platform. So everything we showed you with the button pushing and talked about, that's all scriptable. So in terms of standardization, we don't have anything sort of super built into the product where you can have a UI to do it, but we offer the ability uh, with our command line interface to, if you're, when you're moving databases, you can download a database, change it, and then and push it back up. And so people who do sanitization will basically have a little script themselves that they write that basically calls our, our thing to get the database, runs any sanitization that they think appropriate, and then pushes it that way. And that'll work as well. that'll work no problem. Okay. Yes. This is probably more of a clarification than a question. But can the upstream, the custom upstream work with an installation profile? Uh, yeah, so the question is, will the custom upstream work with an installation profile? And the answer is yes. The way that we do it is that every site has a specific upstream value. Um, these actually all correspond to a specific repository on GitHub. So this is the Panopoly one. This is a Drupal distribution. It basically, it's a fork from our version of Drupal Drop 7, which just is Drupal 7, but we actually put in all the different code there. And we, are, we support a number of, of popular Drupal distributions like, like Drupal Commerce and Panopoly and Open Atrium and stuff like that. But if you're an agency and you have a custom distribution that you want to run just for your agency, we'll let you set that up as well. All you need to do is make a GitHub, uh, GitHub or Bitbucket uh, version. You can be private. Give us the, the repo, and we'll set it up on our platform. Great. Thanks. Cool. Um, other than that, thanks again, everyone, for your attention. And, um, and come down to our booth if you want to chat more. Thanks, everyone.